Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny, and welcome back to Five Nights at Freddy's News. We got some news to talk about. Cool, so thanks for clicking on this video. If you're new, subscribe. If you're not new, or you're still new and you want to show extra support, smash the like button. So let's not waste any more time, let's hop into it. Our first bit of news here is something I want to clarify quickly about Willy's Wonderland. If you saw my video yesterday on Willy's Wonderland, or you saw any video, or if you've been on Twitter and saw that FNAF was trending because of the film, um, we, we got some stuff to talk about. So a lot of people have been showing some comparisons between Willy's Wonderland and FNAF. That's kind of the whole reason why it was trending yesterday. And back in like June of last year, the script of the film, or like segments of the script, were leaked, and they showed a lot of similarities between itself and FNAF. All this info was from King Carter, you know, incredible guy. He posts a lot about FNAF news. He's going to be linked down below. Check out him. Originally in the movie, there was going to be a bear named Barry the Bear who wore a top hat and bow tie. And he also had eyes that would light up in the dark. Hmm, where have I heard of all this before? There was a pirate animatronic who had a Pirate's Cove. Literally, the name of the location was Pirate Pete's Cove. There was Ozzy the Ostrich, who in the entirety of the last video, I called him Ordy the Ostrich. That is entirely my fault, sorry. Who had a orange beak, a lengthy set of eyelashes, and had some loose feathers on top of their head. And finally, there was a rabbit animatronic. So if you're keeping track, that is a bird animatronic, a rabbit, a pirate animatronic, and also a bear animatronic. Hmm, where have I heard of all this before? Yeah, so you may have noticed in the trailer, a lot of stuff has changed and Kane summarized it over on Twitter, saying, since this is blowing up a bit with a new trailer, I thought I'd share some info. Willy's Wonderland was actually approached by Scott Cawthon and Blumhouse to change some things. Barry the Bear is now Tito the Turtle, Pirate Pete is now Nighty Knight, and Regina Rabbit is now Cammy Chameleon. So you may they say, oh, the Kratos had nothing, like, they had no clue about FNAF. You sure about that? I mean, okay, sure, there's, there's a slim chance that that's just coincidence, but, like, come on. And even though, like, I, I looked at their tweet the first time we talked about Willy's Wonderland, I looked at their tweets, and they said that they've never played FNAF. Right? That, that is completely different from never hearing about it, slash not knowing about it. So yeah, whether you say it's a ripoff or not, it was originally going to be heavily ripped off of FNAF. Um, even though there are still some big similarities, you know, I, it's gonna be its own movie. It's gonna happen eventually. February 12th being eventually. Do I consider it a ripoff? I don't know. I, I definitely did think it was inspired by FNAF. Just saying. But anyways, I'll, I'll stop talking about it now because there are gonna be some people that get upset when I say it was inspired by FNAF. So moving on to FNAF AR. There's actually been quite a bit of stuff happening with FNAF AR. So if you logged on to FNAF AR a couple days ago, your whole phone might have crashed. And that was happening to quite a bit of people, especially on iOS. So luckily that has been resolved. You can now hop into the app with no difficulties. They are dropping some even more merchandise based on Baloa and the Dark Circus event. I'll be honest, I do like some of the merchandise. It's unfortunate that they're all in bundles and collections because I would, you know, I'd like to buy just the stickers without having to buy like two shirts to go along with it. And if you logged on recently, you may have seen that the Arcade Mayhem characters are back once again, this is like their third time coming back. So yeah, we're gonna be stuck with these guys for a little bit. If you didn't know, we're not getting any new content on FNAF AR for at least until February. And now moving on to some pretty big news that just came out. One Night at Flinty's 2 is coming very soon to mobile devices. Click Team put out this long video. It's like a minute long. I won't show the entire thing, mostly because it is just gameplay, but you know, we've seen gameplay of One Night at Flinty's 2 before. You can notice some changes such as the um the pig in the main office is now bright like purpley blue so yeah i'm very excited about this i still gotta finish one out of flumpty's one hard boiled mode on mobile before this one comes out so i'll try and get to that soon i don't know how soon they mean when soon i'm hoping it comes out this month because i mean that, that that is pretty soon and also on twitter they tweeted out the egg is coming back real soon check out the trailer while you wait and they have a coming real soon image with flumpty bumpty the egg uh with download on the app store and get it on google play and something i i remember off the top of my head is that didn't jonah chrome say that he was gonna wait until all the games were ported to some devices before he released one out of Flumpy's 3. I can't remember exactly what he said, but it was definitely something along those lines. So, 
We're getting closer to One Night at Flumpty's 3. And now we move on to some news on the Fazbear Frights books. We got a lot, surprisingly, over the past, like, day and a half. In fact, most of this came out this morning, and the, the, what we're gonna talk about right now, the preview of Fazbear Frights number 7, The Cliffs, came out a couple days ago. So I'm not, I'm not gonna read the, the whole thing, because it is, like, quite long. Yeah, it's like 30 pages long. It's it's insane. So if you want to go read the preview by yourself, it, it'll be linked down below. I'm just gonna summarize it. This is from Unit 1987 on Reddit. Thank you. He's a short summary for people who can't read it. Robert is a single father and the only one to look after his two years old son, Tyler, after his wife died due to medical complications. His house is near some cliffs where various people killed themselves. According to local legends, their ghosts still haunt the place. One day, Robert decides to buy his son a new plushie called Tag Along Freddy, which is connected to a smartwatch and sends messages to the parents telling what their sons are doing. Tyler loves his toy and everything goes fine and dandy until one day Robert leaves Tyler at the sandbox. When Robert walks away from a moment and then returns, he finds out Tyler disappeared, leaving Tag Along Freddy behind, and sees a white van leaving the area Tagalong Freddy sends to his smartwatch a message saying, Gone. Robert goes to the police. The officers at first think Tyler is just playing a prank on him, but in the end, it seems they're about to start an investigation. The story's titles are The Cliffs by Ellie Cooper, The Breaking Wheel by Andrea Wagner, and He Told Me Everything by Ellie Cooper. Edit 2 got confused as said the officials had too little information to do anything, but they actually uh, were indeed planning on starting an investigation. So yeah, uh, that is a very quick summary of the like 30 page preview we got the other day. I'm very excited for this one. It does seem like there's a lot of similarities between this one and like Lonely Freddy and Fetch, like if they had a, a you know, book baby. You got the, you know, animatronic sending messages to a smart device, and then you also have a, a Freddy plushie, you know, with, with a child. So hopefully it doesn't seem like it'll be too similar to those books. I don't know who wrote Lonely Freddy and Fetch, so I don't know if they're the same author, but I just hope they seem different enough. Enough. And while we're on the topic of Fazbear Freight's number seven, The Cliffs, I'll do a quick reading of the synopsis and then we'll move on. Some things must be learned the hard way. Reed sees an opportunity to teach the school bully not to mess with him, but ends up mangling the lesson. Robert, an exhausted single father, gets a crash course in parenting when he buys a fancy new teddy bear to watch and entertain his young son. So that is the story of the cliffs. Chris, eager to join the science club at school, agrees to undergo a grisly experiment to be accepted. But in the malevolent universe of FNAF, there's always an education in pain. So, now to figure out which stories are the, uh, he told me everything and the breaking wheel. If I had to take a guess, I would say that Reed's story would be the breaking wheel, because usually when these books are made, the first story is always on the cover and the title of the book. If you didn't know, before it was renamed to the Cliffs, number seven was originally going to be called The Breaking Wheel. So since Reed's story is the first one, I'm guessing that um, The Breaking Wheel is going to be about Reed and their experiences with the school bully. And then he taught me everything will be about Chris and the, and the science club. Moving on to Fazbear Freight's book number nine, The Puppet Carver. It now has a official description. I have not read this yet, so this is going to be my first time reading it. Consumed by failure, desperate to keep his kitty pizza from bankruptcy, Jake lets his animatronics tech pinch him a new invention, pitch him a new invention that might just give him some perspective. Frustrated by an unfair arcade game, Colton throws himself into re-engineering the, the device at any cost, and Molly's best friend goes missing on a tour of Freddy's Pizza Factory. She knows what really happened, but her guilt isn't the only thing threatening to eat her alive. Holy crap. Okay, so Jack has a kitty pizzeria and it's about to go bankrupt, kind of like Chuck E. Cheese boys. And he lets his animatronics tech pitch him an invention. Okay, so like, I'm guessing they don't mean it as the animatronics pitch him an idea about what he can do. Um, I'm guessing he has some skill in animatronic. I don't know. Again, this is my first time reading it, so these are my first thoughts. I don't know if this is like an origin story of the animatronics that would be amazing actually holy shoot that would be so cool an origin story of the freddy fazbear gang animatronics that would be cool to see frustrated by an unfair arcade game colton okay so colton has a very similar name to colton from the og book trilogy i doubt that has any meaning though so yeah i doubt there's anything there um significance wise 
Re-engineering the device at any cost. Hmm. I don't- I feel like that one's the most... Meh. Unless it turns out to be incredible, but right now I'm like, okay, I want to talk about Foodie's Pizza Factory, though. No, like, legit, that actually is Five Nights at Candy's. That's insane. <laughs> I can't wait to read that one. Alright, so that is that. Moving on to book number 10, we have a name and I believe a description, too. Yeah, a description as well. Let's talk about that. So book number 10 is called The Friendly Face. Interesting. No cover yet, so we can't actually speculate about what this face is, who this face is. And this is the description. It says, Act in haste, repent at leisure. This is also my first time reading this. After losing his friend in a terrible accident, Andrew can't spend his money fast enough on a happy companion guaranteed to keep his friend's memory alive. Oh, dude, that- Oh, no. I can already tell that's gonna go so bad. Mott? Mott. Not Matt, but Mott. Quickly flushes his brother's creepy new pets. Wait, what? But the creatures have other plans? Are you kidding me? What are these stories, Scott Cawthon? Eager to put her classmates in their place, homecoming queen Jessica, hmm, interesting, doesn't stop to double check her homework, reprogramming a defunct animatronic. Okay, so, what the heck? <laughs> okay, so Andrew very clearly bought something to keep the memory, it's like when someone puts someone's brain into another thing to keep them alive. That's what I'm guessing this is gonna be about. That does remind me a bit of Dreadbear, but I I doubt it's gonna be anything like, you know, Dreadbear. So that's gonna be creepy. Oh no, he's gonna get attached to it and it's gonna, oh dude, it's gonna go so wrong. I can tell that story's gonna go so wrong. And then Mott, M-O-T-T, -T, not Matt, M-A-T-T, -T, but Mott. Okay. Quickly flushes his brother's creepy new pets. Hmm. I doubt they're gonna be like actual pets because not only is that just weird, like why would you do that, um, but they also call them creatures later on, so I'm guessing they're probably gonna be like toys or something, who then go to attack Mott because he flushed them, I don't know, like down the toilet or something. And then Homecoming Queen Jessica. Now, going back to Carlton, you know, characters from the OG trilogy, Jessica is a character from the OG trilogy, so maybe it's gonna be a, like, Jeremy scenario where we have multiple characters in this franchise called Jessica. Not entirely sure. Um, Homecoming Queen doesn't double check her homework, reprogramming a defunct animatronic. Hmm, again, kinda similar to Fetch in my eyes, just about, you know, it being a defunct animatronic and then it gets, you know, reprogrammed, I guess you could say. Again, I really hope these stories don't get stale, because I really do enjoy these stories. Even though I'm not up to date with them, I do really enjoy them. Unfortunately, as much as I hate to say this, number 10 is a is a good number to end on. I I don't really know if Scott will keep doing them. I, I don't know, because 10's a lot of books, so if he keeps doing like 11, 12, 13, like, it's gonna get repetitive. Oh. Speaking of number 11, we actually have confirmation that it is in the works. Wow, I did not even realize that. So, Fazbear Fights book number 11 is, is actually happening. Oh, wow. So in that case, I think he'll stop at 12, okay? Because the first collection of the Fazbear Fights stories had the first four, so it would make sense if there were like three collections for four books. I don't know. He's gonna keep doing them until he dies. So that's all the news, a lot about the books, but I also wanted to cover some uh, small things about FNAF AR, One Night of Film Tees 2, and also uh, Willy's Wonderland. So that's it. Hopefully my core collection, you know, FNAF thing arrives today. It was supposed to be here on like the 14th, but it's still not here, so I don't know what's going on with that. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.